Hello everyone, and welcome to round 9 of the My Team All Shumi Career Mode. Round 9 then of this 16 round career mode, we're emulating the 1991 season as we are starting Michael Schumacher's career all over again with the Reborn Benetton team. So round 9 then is around the Red Bull Ring and this is my kind of track. This is a track that I always perform very well at, at least on this game. But anyway, before we get into the track, let's get into the HQ changes then. So we've had to re-sign our son, of course we have paid him as much as we possibly could as he's our son. We'll keep it in the family and we'll give him as much as possible. So of course he has re-signed with us, 2.62 million dollars it cost us but he's worth it he's our son and i'm sure he can slip a little 50 percent back to us as uh, we are his dad but anyway we've also unlocked an extra sponsorship slot and we're going to go with satellite um, so that does mean that we've got to try and complete 100 laps throughout the course of a weekend we've also ranked up to uh, level eight or acclaim level eight so which means we're going to have better power mapping which is going to reduce our engine wear and also going to have some more uh, resource points both of those are going to help us quite considerably as that's two things that we really really need in this career mode We've also upgraded our HQ to give us some resource points generation. And this is everything else that has happened then. Nothing too much exciting to be honest going on here. We've got a couple of little upgrades, um, but nothing too major, I don't believe, off the top of my head. But the biggest one, though, with this race, we are going to be putting in a brand new engine. So we've been running engines one and two for the first half of the season, and we're going to put in pretty much all new components. The only two components we aren't going to put in are only 20% worn. And this is, of course, a straight line speed circuit. So let's see then what our updates did. You can see we've just moved ahead of Haas and also Renault. Renault, for some reason, haven't really had any changes but the rest of the midfield teams have had a little update so we're theoretically sort of the what's that eighth best team or so uh looks like eighth seventh ish at a glance so uh, we had a few updates hopefully uh, our teammate or son whichever one you call him mick will have a good result but anyway this is qualifying then as i said a brand spanking new engine and look at that in the top left we've already done two laps in this session this is the end of the session we're in fourth somehow we put it in fourth. I said this was my kind of track, but I still didn't expect fourth. But anyway, this is our best lap in qualifying then. Let's see what we can do on the curb. Nailing all of the curbs there. Didn't really cut or extend any corners, but absolutely nailed all the curbs. We're actually slightly slower than we were on our previous best lap, but only by two hundredths of a second. And this engine is really, really helping us around this track. It's given us significantly more power to the extent, extent of which on the very first qualifying lap that I did, which is the first laps on this brand new engine, I couldn't get the car stopped. It was going so much faster in the straight line. I genuinely could not get the car stopped in a straight line it was absolutely mad but now we are just about a little bit of lock up there but we are just about now used to this engine power on this third flying lap and you see there we're just about level well a hundredth down on our previous time but we're going to try and push it in this middle set to see if we can improve we've had a load of time there really carried some serious speed through there okay, well actually in the end we're about three hundredths or so and nice lot of speed through there once again better exit puts us half a tenth up it's not a lot but we're already p4 so if we can improve it maybe we'll be moving up a couple of positions shot o'clock is only half a tenth ahead of us so really going to send it through this final turn see what we can do getting also down nicely layered a bit of an extension but we'll get away with that on the exit going to be about two tenths up come to the end where will that put us will that put us even further forward no, it will not. <laughs> Still P4. But actually, that's because everyone else improved. Um, with that time, I think that would have put us either first or second. I think it would have put us second position if nobody improved at the end. But pretty much everyone at the front improved at the end. And look at that. I tell you what, we're less than, well, we're just over two tenths of pole position. I cannot believe it. We've out-qualified a Ferrari. The only team we got fully out-qualified by was a Mercedes and one Ferrari. And we out-qualified every single person else. It's absolutely ridiculous. So clearly, this is my kind of track. Mick Schumacher's down in 20th, unfortunately, still only quicker than the Williams. So we need a few more updates to not only uh, the car, but also we'll try and improve him, try and send him off for some training. But anyway, this is our two choices for the race. But what we really need to look at is at the top there. So we've got a nice sunny start, going to clouds, going to light rain, going to heavy rain. So as much as I'd love to just crawl around and just try and get a podium... It's not going to be as easy as that. So this is our two options. We've got either a two-stop, soft, medium, soft, or we've got a soft and then uh, hard. So, of course, we have to start on the softs. We'll get back into the strategy in a little while. But for now, we're on the start. Five lights, and they're out. And we're away straight away. They're trying to get a nice clean start. And I tell you what, that is a launch and a half straight up to P2 there. Flying past Lewis Hamilton ahead of us. Let's see if we can do about Martin Bottas. But, oh, no, we've been hit. We just got hit from behind there. I think that was Lewis Hamilton. Bit of awesome as well on the exit. Going across the grass. That's going to allow, enable Charles Leclerc to try and go up our inside into the next corner. We're going to need to break very, very late. He's pretty quick in a straight line as well. He must have a fairly new engine. We're going to break very, very late. Get it also down just about. Keep it on the track. Go and get a nice clean exit. We've actually managed to retain that position somehow. But anyway, let's have a look back now at some re replays of the start. Because tell you what, we had a good chance to attack Valtteri Bottas there. But we're only 1.4 back. So I think it was Lewis Hamilton that hit us. But let's have a look. Really, really clean launch. Can't believe the start of just that. That is the start of my life. And what a 
a day to have it when we're already starting in fourth. And yeah, Lewis Hamilton just outbraked himself there. He's lucky we've not got sim damage on because that would have been some front wing damage. And let's have a look at a couple of other shots then. This is that nice, real clean start. You see there, not much wheel spin, which is what when it was just launch off the grid. That's honestly the best start I've ever had on this game, or potentially even any F1 game. And yeah, I think Lewis Hamilton just outbraked himself. Let's have a look on board of Lewis Hamilton. He's going to be squirming on the exit there, but... This is Lewis Hamilton very clearly there in his eye line. And, yeah, I mean, we, we came across on him a little bit. But, uh, well, let, let me know what you think of that one, guys. I think, for me, that was Hamilton's fault. I think I did come across him a little bit, but I was, you know, completely clear of him. It was my track at that point. I was I was literally past him. He wasn't even a little bit alongside me. And then he just outbreaks himself. I mean, I think in real life, he probably would have backed out of it a little bit there. He would have kind of seen me, you know, well up his inside and we just wouldn't have absolutely sent it on the outside because it's just not going to work, is it? So, uh, anyway... Onto this first lap then. We are now up into P2. We've got Shadow Clerk behind us, which might help us as the Mercedes are certainly the quicker car. But uh, for now, we're just trying to adapt to this, uh, well, mainly this engine. Because, of course, I've done practice, but uh, we haven't done any uh, real practice laps with this engine. Not with fuel. We've done qualifying. So, uh, really, I'm just so far just trying to get used to the, how much quicker we're going in a straight line compared to practice. Because, honestly, I actually didn't record practice. I don't normally record practice because I never show it. So, there's no point uh, recording it and using up disk space. But, uh... I, th I reckon I'm something like 20 kilometers an hour faster in qualifying. And that's not an exaggeration. Because I honestly struggled to get it slowed down. I was braking earlier and still wasn't getting it slowed down. So it really is a significant amount quicker in a straight line. This brand new engine, I think potentially there's some Honda upgrades in this engine. But uh, I think the main thing really is just that it's got no wear. I think it's just you lose quite a bit of performance uh, across the lifespan of the engine. So we've really gained an awful lot of time. And uh, well, that's put us in P2. We've got Valtteri Bottas ahead of us. And I tell you what, he's only two seconds ahead, you know. He hasn't gained that much on that opening lap there. And we're still kind of settling into this race. Of course, because he is AI controlled. He is a computer. He will settle in immediately. There will be no kind of adapting for him. But uh, for now, we're concentrating on Charles Clark behind. He is now... Actually, he's just about a second behind. We're going to get DRS on the next lap. If we can keep out DRS in through the next corner. And can we do it? We're going to use a lot of overtake DRS to try and keep out of it. When he's over a second. And the next detection point, the first detection point, I should say, is the one here. So, he has not got DRS. We've actually got the pace. It wasn't just a one-off qualifying. We're a little bit deep there, but it wasn't just a one-off qualifying. We have actually got the pace. And Skippy head now to lap 10. And you can see 5.3 seconds. We very much have got the pace, but the crowds are looking a little bit dark. Let's ask our engineer then what he thinks of the weather. Uh, hopefully he'll be piping up now. We're expecting the rain to hit us any time now. Dry seem like the fastest tyre at the moment. Any time now. So let's not forget, it was forecast to be the last, what, quarter of the race. So I was expecting, let's get into the strategy now. I was expecting to go soft then mediums because it's forecast to rain and i was thinking that everyone else around me it initially suggested i go soft hard but i was thinking everyone else around me will go soft hard not expecting it to rain because they're ai so i'll go soft medium hopefully i'll pace them in the middle stint and then pit well i mean maybe from the lead now at the start of the race i wasn't thinking i'll be leading but hopefully pit after having a good stint on the mediums once they get just worn enough we then pit for intermediate tires but Interestingly, it's rained a hell of a lot earlier than I was expecting. So I was thinking maybe I'll stretch my soft stint as long as possible so that I can uh, make sure that I'm, you know, nice and comfortable at the end. Because uh, I don't want to be running out of medium tyres as the rain starts to come down. But as it's forecast to rain earlier, do we pit earlier? Because we want to make the maximum use of these medium tyres. These soft tyres are now quite worn. You see a very, very late call there. We are going to box this lap. Very, very late call indeed because I wasn't sure right until that last second. Diving into the pit lane now. We need to try and get a good nice stock. So we want to try and undercut Valtu Bottas, who may well be pitting next lap just about to get it all slowed down. Only just. Hope we have a nice good stop from the boys. We do indeed. Look at that. Nice and quick. 2.1 seconds. Really nice stop from the boys. Coming on the pit exit now. Then a bit of oversea on the exit. But we'll go right behind Daniel Ricciardo. This is the traffic we did not need. We need to clear this traffic as quickly as we possibly can. Because we are racing Valtu Bottas out on track. We're five seconds ahead of Charles Clerk. It was actually Lewis Hamilton now on that inlet. But oh, we've actually made a bit of contact with Lance Stroll. That was completely unintentional, to be honest. It's because Daniel Ricciardo defended from us, so we couldn't actually see stroll until we hit the brakes at that point it was too late and luckily it was only wheel to wheel contact so we sort of got away with it a little bit but uh it did sort of slow us down so it wasn't ideal but anyway we're through nonetheless up into p10 we've got daniel kvyat up next we need to try and get past him as quickly as possible again this is not our race on the racetrack at the moment i'm trying to undercut valtteri bottas here because he has not yet pitted he may well pit this lap and he's trying to get past kvyat as quickly as he possibly can look at this look how close we are even with a dirty air but we've got fresher tires does he box this lap no he's not going to so we're going to enable some overtake ers to try and get up his inside into the next turn i would have got some drs on the exit at the corner but decided that actually potentially be too slow in the next couple of corners i've got a serious amount of pace over him so i'm just going to push it now using lots of ers and actually he hasn't pit so only sebastian vettel that's pit from fourth position so interestingly valtteri bottas has not pit I mentioned briefly, Lewis Hamilton was behind us, so he managed to overtake Charles Leclerc after quite a few laps. I think it's about eight laps or so. 
managed to get past Charles Leclerc. So he was about five and a half seconds off the top of my head behind us. Um, so there's a pretty decent sized gap there. I'm not really too worried. We'll be able to um, undercut him quite comfortably. It's Valtteri Bottas we're going for. We're going to try and go for the lead of this race. I don't know when it's going to rain. I'm assuming the AI will probably be quicker than me in the rain. I would have thought the AI tend to be fairly good in the rain. So uh, really right now I'm just trying to get ahead of Valtteri Bottas desperately for when he pits. Because uh, I think that is my best opportunity um, in order to try and sneak past. And we've got Sergio Perez up next. Hopefully we'll... He will box and also give us some DRS, ideally both, but we will see. Trying to close in on him as much as I can in case he doesn't box so that we can get him in DRS. And you see, also trying to save a little bit of ERS though, because I don't know where we're going to come out relative to Valtteri Bottas. He actually doesn't box, but I don't know where we're going to come out. So we need to save a bit of ERS. It is now starting to rain. There's a few specs on the camera, but we're actually closing nicely on Sergio Perez up ahead for P7. I tell you what, normally... For P7, I'll be absolutely buzzing, but we are going for a lot more than that in this race. Closing on Sergio Perez, going to try and dive up his inside. Very late break, and actually way too late. I think it was a little bit damp in that first turn. That pushed me all the way off. I break quite late, but normally I break late in the AI there anyway. I didn't break excessively late, so I think that was just a little bit damp, which needs to be a little bit cautious now. And interestingly, Valtteri Bottas did not pit on this lap, but he does pit on the following lap. And I tell you what, that's... Oh, no, that's Lewis Hamilton. That's Lewis Hamilton. Valtteri Bottas still has not pitted. We pitted on lap... I think it was lap 10. We're on to lap 15 now, so he's running seriously long. So we have had a massive undercut. As Alex Albon now comes into the pits, we run a little bit wide with the dirty air. Hopefully we get some DRS. We do indeed. Is Valtteri Bottas now into the pits as well? Looking on the minimap in the bottom left. Yes, he is indeed. And we should be quite comfortably ahead of him, I would have thought. Because we have had several laps of undercutting him. Um, but you can see now it is quite damp. I was, I was hoping that he wouldn't stay out long enough for it to start raining. Now, the logic for pitting early is that we want to make maximum use of the medium tyres. Our soft tyres were really, really warm. We're 3.3 seconds ahead of Bottas now. Our soft tyres were really, really warm. So we wanted to, thinking, you know, maybe it would take four or five laps for it to get wet, even if it starts raining now. So I was thinking, we want to pit now, because everyone else is going to pit soon anyway. Oh, a bit of oversteer there. But, uh, yeah, so that was my logic, was trying to make maximum use of the medium tyre before we go to the inters because I didn't want to you know pit for mediums soft tires be ruined pit for mediums and then like a lap later pitting on the intermediate tires that was not an efficient way to go racing so I want to make maximum use of the medium tires by pitting as early as possible and of course get the undercut on Valtteri Bottas and it's worked out really nicely we were 3.3 ahead mind you and we are now 1.6 ahead I'm aware I've essentially not taken a breath in this commentary so far but it's all going on we are leading this race the reborn Benetton team is leading only their ninth race in existence. Michael Schumacher is leading a race, not for the first time, but for the first time in sort of reality. We've led a couple of races when we haven't pit before, um, but never been in sort of real contention for the win. But I tell you what, today we are. And look at Luke after Lewis Hamilton, 17 seconds. Lewis Hamilton is now 17 seconds behind. We are going to be coming into the pits this lap then. It, mind you, they advised me, it is now time for intermediate tyres. So in we come then, trying to get it also down nicely. I don't want to cross that white line too much. And trying to get it all in nice and steady. But I tell you what, Valtteri Bottas is only 1.2 behind us. I think it's been coming into the pits. Very, very close stuff. This could be seriously nip and tuck. See the Mercedes boys coming out. We need to try and stay ahead of them here. I think if he gets ahead of us, he is just going to be able to pull away. He is going to be fast on the intermediate tyres. I'm pretty sure of that. So... Come on, guys. Good stop, please. Come on, Benetton. No. Why is it slow? Come on, guys. Release me. Release me. Oh, just about four seconds stop. And I tell you what, that is as close as it gets. But we need to have a nice clean exit now onto the intermediate tyres. Still leading this race. Everyone else has now pit. So we are now leading this race. We also need to be careful with tyre wear. But for now, all we're trying to do is get a nice clean exit from the pit exit. And we managed to get a nice enough exit to be comfortably ahead of Valtteri Bottas. But I tell you what, honestly, about a tenth of a second slower, and we were not getting out of that pit box there because he was going to come down the pit lane and we wouldn't be able to get him and we're about to somehow try and overtake him on track and like I said I'm expecting AI to be quicker than me on these intermediate tyres but we'll see but for now at least I'm ahead of him I can defend right now I'm thinking right I need to save up some ERS here because uh, yes I've got 72% we're not low but I want to make sure that I've got any in case I make a mistake and I need to use a lot of ERS two straights in a row and really rinse the battery I don't want to be running out of ERS because right now we could be going to the end here it is forecast to go heavy rain at the end, so oh, we're over steer. But we, it is forecast to go heavy rain at the end, so we could well go be going to the full wet tyres. But I can't rely on that. I can't bank on that. So uh, it could be intermediate to the tyres to the end. So we also need to conserve our tyres. But for now, all I'm trying to do is get used to the grip of these intermediates. I'm not trying to conserve tyres. We'll get to that in a couple of laps of time. But for now, I'm just trying to keep it ahead of Valtteri Bottas. See there, just a bit all over the track, a few little cuts and extension, just getting used to the grip of these tyres. But so far, we're doing okay. Don't forget, there's no DRS. There is no DRS when it is wet. And again, they're a little bit deep. Very, very deep. All four wheels miles off the track. That's just me getting used to these tyres and this grip once again. But uh, so far, doing quite a good job, actually. 
And interestingly, in qualifying, I was purple in the first sector. I <laughs> just thought I'd point that out. Purple, fastest of anyone in the first sector. So I'm really, really strong in this first sector for whatever reason. But uh, anyway, doing quite comfortably. We're actually able to keep Valtteri Bottas behind quite comfortably. He's not all over us as much as I thought he would be. So we're doing okay. So now we need to move into tyre conservation mode. We saved up a bit of ERS. So tyre conversation, com uh, conversation, no, conservation mode. Anyway, on top 24, three laps later, we have now got some traffic. We're actually going to get blue flags on other people, which is a first for us in this reborn Benetton team. But anyway, got Kevin Magnussen up next. He's actually squeezing us. Why is he squeezing us? But luckily just gives us enough room there. That was a bit silly from Nicholas Latifi back in right off as well. And we're going to hope that Valtteri Bottas gets a little bit caught out because he was still under a second behind us just before this traffic. Let's have a look on the mini. It looks like he might be actually going past both of them. Yep. Yep, he is past both of them. So, unfortunately, he does not get caught out. He is now still only about a second behind us. But i tell you what, another couple of laps later, look at that gap now. 2.3 seconds. We've had no traffic. I've managed to pull a gap. I've managed to pull a gap. So, I've settled into this intermediate tyre. And I've just managed to somehow pull a gap. I've just calmed it all down. I've realised that I can use a little bit of ERS because we're now deploying uh, less automatically because we're being a bit more careful with the throttle. So, we're now able to use a bit more overtake than I was using previously. We're also going out to lean on the exits there because we're really having to conserve these tyres. After about two laps on these intermediate tyres, the rears were almost twice as worn as the fronts, which would not have been good at all. Flashbacks to our Monaco race where we really, really chewed through the rear tyres. So for now, we've just been so cautious on the exit. You can see it here. Just a little check-in. You can see how we're doing. But actually, Mick Schumacher's out of this section. It causes a... Oh, only a VSC. I tell you what, if that was a full safety car, as much as at the moment we feel like we've got the pace on Bottas, I don't want to restart. I would have thought they are going to have better tyres than us. But anyway, we get through that one. We're coming on to the penultimate lap of this race now. We managed to pull a 5.6 second gap after that VSC. So we have most certainly got the pace on them. I considered turning my engine down about now, but I thought actually... No, well, actually, a couple of laps ago, I considered turning my engine down, but I remembered that it's due to heavy rain at the end of this race, so I did not want to risk having to pit the full wet tyres or a safety car or anything like that. So I, I wanted to turn my engine down because this new engine has been so, performing so well, but I thought, no, no, more important than anything else is getting a win. A win in round nine. I can't believe it. But anyway, we've got some traffic to do with first. We've got Esteban Ocon. He gives us a nice lot of room. Backs off of it on the inside. Getting also down nicely. Roman Grosjean is up next. We've got two more cars to deal with. That is not what we need. We have got a nice comfortable gap. Six second gap to Valtteri Bottas. But tell you what, if we have a little crash here, a little spin or damage our wing, he could be right all over us. There you go. Confirmation of our tie wear in the bottom right there. I think, I believe it was uh, rears were about mid 50s. Fronts are about mid 40s percent of wear. So having... Taking it really easy on the rears. We have backed off nicely. And I'm trying to s slow my talking down here. Because I know I do try and take some gaps in my commentary. Because I know I talk fast anyway. <sighs> so I try and leave gaps to just, uh, you know, let you guys process what's going on. Let me process what I'm going to say. But i tell you what, this race has been so insane. It's been dry to wet. And we've been qualified in fourth. Had an incredible start. And now we're leaving this race. We're on to the last lap of this race. That's going out the window. Let's talk fast because we've got overtake here. Roman Grosjean. We're going to go up to overtake ERS. But he almost squeezes us just like his teammate did. We've got George Russell up the inside here. This is not the stress we need. But he backs off nicely. And we just about managed to get had of the Haas car just in time. But that was a bit too hairy. We had to go between two lap cars. I did not want that. But now it is a clean run to the finish. It is a clean run to the finish for our first win of the Reborn Benetton team. The first win for Michael Schumacher in 25 macaroos and in fact we've also got the fastest lap of the race to make that 26 macaroos we immediately go deeper as we realize holy hell this is the last lap of the race it's all up to us now there's no traffic to contend with all we have to do now is get it to the end of this race and we have managed our first win i cannot believe it. i said in the last race when we got oh, i won't say what position we got but i think it was a mid points position and I said that normally the next round is Austria. Normally I go quite well at Austria, but I can't see how it'll be better than the last race. And I tell you what, this has absolutely blown my expectations out of the water. We come around the penultimate corner, one more corner to go to take a comfortable, a comfortable win in the reborn Benetton team. Michael Schumacher, of course it's in the wet, takes his first win in the reborn Benetton team. And I tell you what, what a race. What a race that was. Honestly, such... So much happened. It was such a good race. Driver of the day is Kimi Raikkonen. I'm, I mean, it should be us, let's be honest. In the Reborn Benetton team, it was only the eighth fastest car. I don't know who that is. Apparently, that's our team principal. But it's only the eighth fastest car. We've somehow put it P4 on the grid with a, with a really strong quality lap. The brand new engine gave us that. But I tell you what, at the end of that race, going to wet tyres as well, we needed to really carry that car. And there's me celebrating my own team. We've won the race. 
I can't believe it. Michael Schumacher, top step of the podium. We get to see his celebration. Look at him. What a lad. Michael Schumacher takes his first win for Benetton. And I tell you what, we really have emulated the Benetton team and Michael Schumacher in that car, haven't we? By taking a win in the wet. Can you believe it? I actually can't quite recall the uh, exactly what happened with Michael Schumacher's first win. But I suspect, knowing Michael Schumacher, this was probably quite similar to it in the wet. <sighs> We've taken P1. I can't. 20, full maximum points as well. It's 26 points because we just managed to get the fastest lap. Look at that. By a matter of a, less than two hundredths of a second. And that was actually both on lap two. So we have the pace at the start of this race. 17 seconds to P3 in the end. 5.3 seconds to Valtteri Bottas. That was a comfortable win in the end. And there we go. That is our standing at the moment. We've now got 66 points. We've almost doubled our points. Not quite, actually. We, we had, what? Uh, 30 points before this race so not quite doubled the points but not far off it 26 points were scored in that race unbelievable scenes we also hit the fastest lap of the race and we are now puts us actually just ahead of Alex Albon in the standings and look at those constructor standings we're now 66 points we're now best of the rest the reborn Benetton team is now best of the rest despite being the eighth fastest car and I'll tell you what these few points for this paying positions that we've been taking home have worked wonders we're now 13 points clear at McLaren but I tell you what the fight is on for the rest of the season I doubt very much we'll get another win that was my speciality that track and I very much doubt we will be getting another win so we need to take home consistent points we need to develop this car as much as we possibly can and hopefully we can take best of the rest position and then hopefully then next season we may well be in contention of the championship but anyway guys please do subscribe if you're new because this uh this series has just gone to the next level and i hope you all enjoyed that video i loved that video and i thank you all for watching bye bye